<laughs> on to the Philadelphia 76ers who have simultaneously had an uneventful off season. That feels like it's been too eventful based on the Ben Simmons stuff. Uh, they drafted Jaden Springer at number 28. They extended Joel Embiid at four years, 196 million. He is fully guaranteed now through 2026, 2027. They waived George Hill for $1 million. They re-signed Danny Green to a two-year $20 million deal. His $10 million salary in 2022, 2023 is non-guaranteed. They signed for Con Korkmaz to a three-year $15 million deal, fully guaranteed with no options. How about that for him after it looked like he was kind of on the fringes of the NBA to now parlay into this and basically – a year and a half. They signed George Niang to a two-year $6.8 million deal, fully guaranteed with no options. They signed Andre Drummond to a one-year deal at the minimum. They signed Grant Riller to a two-way contract. Adam Frommel, my co-host, was super happy about that. And they signed Aaron Henry to a two-way contract as well. Notable subtractions include George Hill, Anthony Tolliver, Dwight Howard, and inevitably Ben Simmons. I'm not sure if that's going to happen over the offseason. Different conversation. I, I want to preface, before I ask you about your grade, did the fact that they haven't moved Ben Simmons at all factor into your grade for the Sixers. Only in so far as like the range of how much the grade could change if it were to happen in the off season is enormous, just depending on the package they get. Um, I did not, I didn't factor their inability or unwillingness to trade him uh, in, in my grade, which, which is a B minus, um, which sounds bad, I guess, but, Again, we said C's average, so it's a couple steps up from average. Um, the the only like, I mean, the Embiid extension to me is the most significant thing they did, obviously. Um, and maybe there was no scenario where he was going to take anything less than what he got. Um, I have concerns about giving him a fully guaranteed multi-year deal. It would have been nice to have had some of the injury-based protections uh, that were on the last one. Just something because... Every, it's every year it's every year and like the, the, as he ages i just think you know these nagging things it's always going to be something and the older you get and the more they accumulate especially with his history of severe injuries it's it's concerning but he may have just said like fully guaranteed and i'm going to walk out of the room now if we don't have a deal so hard to know um danny green's fine two for 20 non-guarantee on the second year pork maz i'm okay with um, so yeah, just a B minus cause they did lock up their, you know, per minute last year, MVP of the league, uh, to a multi-year extension. And, and it, depending on what happens with Simmons, there's a lot of latitude with this grade, but we shall see if that's an off season consideration or not. I share your concerns about Joel. It's just, they have never had less leverage when it comes to him, especially because right. of the Ben Simmons stuff. I gave them a B in part because they have, and this could change, maybe they're pressured into accepting just this mismatch return for Ben Simmons. The fact that they haven't, I actually sort of like, and I tend to lean very pro player, and I do recognize the Sixers tried to trade him for James Harden. There isn't a team in the league that wouldn't have traded Ben Simmons for James Harden last year if that was the opportunity they were given. And Ben Simmons has just failed to fundamentally expand his game and to the point where he regressed at points in the semifinals. That has to matter. And he has four years left on his deal. Um, I applaud the Sixers so far for not caving to his trade demand and sending him out for a, you know, CJ McCollum, if that's the centerpiece of your return is fine, but it has to be CJ McCollum and stuff. And there are Blazers people that I really respect who think that that is an astronomical asking price, CJ McCollum and stuff for Ben Simmons right now. And I get it from their perspective of look at what Ben Simmons just did with his offensive vanishing act. That is like, no, it's not an astronomical asking price, though, in reality, because CJ McComb is not as good as Ben Simmons short term or long term as valuable. Because when you look at Ben Simmons' playmaking, his defense, the offense is a big deal, but you have to look at their, their contracts and who's going to age better financially. So I'm giving the Sixers a little bit of a bump for that. I also am fine with the Joel Embiid deal because he's so good. I think that you need to build your roster under the guys that he's going to miss between 21 and 82 games every single year. Have they done that? Not necessarily, but he was arguably the permanent MVP of the league last season, even given what Nikola Jokic did. So I don't, and I don't know what their other options were and everything else they did was fine. I'm not crazy about Andre Drummond as the backup. It's either going to end up being like this ace move or just explode in the Sixers face. But I really did like, I thought the George and Yang edition kind of flowed um, under the radar for them. And I also, I really enjoyed the Jaden Springer pick, just someone else um, six, four guy who can really score, got to the line at a very good clip. 
during his lone year at college. I would have liked to have seen them done more to add a secondary ball handler. And I know that they were limited in what they could do, but now you're going into a point where it's like, okay, we have Tyrese Maxey, Seth Curry, Shake Milton, and Ben Simmons. And then Jane Springer, who we drafted, is really the only addition. You're actually down one if you want to factor in waving George Hill. And it feels like there had to be something that they could do on the margins just to juice up their ball handling depth, especially with the, not the, even the specter of a Ben Simmons trade. Maybe you think you recoup some ball handling in that, which you better. But now it looks a little bit worse because of the Ben Simmons trade demand. And what if he really doesn't report to training camp and he's on your team, but not on your roster? He's not that conventional ball handler in the half court but he is your most important playmaker with the ball in his hands. And so it would have been nice to have seen them get a lower level guy there or just be the team that had signed James Ennis so that they could get an A+.